All right, folks, we're going to do something a little... <laughs> I need this to speak to you <laughs> or else you won't hear. All right, folks, we're going to do something a little different. And especially for those who have hearing loss but not attended to it. So, you know, there are people out there who have hearing loss who just have not gone to the doctor, have not worked on the issue. And I want to say, you know, what kind of things could happen to you if you don't? So, um, so here we go. So if, if you don't go to the doctor or audiologist or an ENT specialist, you know you have hearing loss. Um, these are the things that could happen to you. So difficulties communicating with everyone. It doesn't mean that everyone mumbles. Uh-uh. It means you can't hear. <laughs> so, and that is frustrating for the other person on the other end. So, you know, it can put a strain on your relationship with your spouse, with your mother, with your friends. So people at work, especially people at work. Um, so, you know, you really have to uh, realize and, and come to the truth for yourself, come to the real world and realize that people are gonna get very frustrated and trying to talk to you. Um, the other one is education and employment. You know, in your employment, your boss is gonna pull you aside and say, what's going on? You're, you're not hearing me, you're not hearing your coworkers, and that concerns me. So what are you going to do to improve that? Because I don't want you missing any important information. So, so really, that might hit you in the toe, which hurts a lot. In education, of course, you want to learn all you can. You want to get the bang for your buck. And uh, if you can't hear the professor, you can't hear the instructor, you're in trouble because you won't be able to finish your degree. And, you know, your, your grades are going to suffer for it. So, you know, if you're in a college or university, uh, then you can go to the students uh, with disabilities and they will accommodate you. They will figure out how to assist you in every class. The other one is emotional issues. Uh, hearing loss, believe it or not, will affect your emotions and it will, you know, uh, hurt and hit your self-esteem, your, your confidence in being able to communicate and being, being able to interact with others. So be aware that it, it can get very emotional. Hearing loss will hit you in the emotions department. So, um, your health, mild hearing loss. Now, this is based on research. Mild hearing loss doubles the risk of dementia. Listen to me well. Mild hearing loss doubles your risk of dementia, and moderate hearing loss triples it. Triples it. Now, I don't think you want to go down that road. Uh, uh, dementia, but hearing loss is attached to dementia. So the faster, the sooner you attend to the needs of your hearing loss, the better. You get yourself out of that risk area. The other one is safety, you know, untreated hearing loss. And I talk a lot about safety on my channel all the time. You know, um, I talk about, you know, the ways in which you can keep yourself safe in terms of uh, using uh, tools that will uh, wake you up on time so you can get to work, <laughs> that will uh, go off if the fire alarm goes off, it will go off and you can use a vibrator that will wake you up and then you'll know you need to get your little booty out of the house. Um, and especially fires. A lot of people with hearing loss or deafness die in fires every year in the United States and around the world. So um, this is really an, an important factor 
that you look at treating your hearing loss and do not run into issues like floods, that there was an alert on TV, you didn't see it, you didn't hear it, um, and fires either inside your home or outside the home, you didn't hear it, you didn't understand it on TV, um, you didn't have the captions on, and then you go up in flames. So this is really a serious issue, and it's really important for you to pay attention to this video. <laughs> so here are some other important topics related to hearing loss that include causes. You know, 80% of the time, uh, doctors do not know uh, what has caused your hearing loss. 80% of the time. But 20% of the time they do, and sometimes 30%. So, you know, you can ask questions and see if they will uh, be able to catch on to what is causing your hearing loss. So it's really important to ask the questions when you're at the doctor or audiologist. Symptoms, <laughs> here we go. Muffling of speech and other sounds. That'll happen for sure. Trouble understanding words, especially when in a crowd or in noisy places. Has that happened to you yet? Yep, I'm sure it has. Trouble hearing the letters of the alphabet that aren't vowels. Often asking others to speak more slowly, clearly and loudly, and needing to turn up the volume of the TV, which will drive everybody crazy in your house. If you live alone, you're blessed. <laughs> but if you live with others, they're just going to be very annoyed at the volume of the TV. So turn on those captions. <laughs> Accommodations. Now this is important. If you are a person, you're very aware of your hearing loss, you have attended to the needs, you're wearing hearing aids or use cochlear implants, then there are accommodations for you out there. If you're renting, the renter has the, the, the responsibility to put in a one, depending on the size of the house, but one, um, starting with one flashing uh, smoke and, and fire detector. So usually centralized in the home, which doesn't do anything for your bedroom, but hey. Um, accommodations in schools, in colleges and universities, they have a department for uh, students with disabilities. You might not wanna think about that and you might flip out on me. I don't have a disability. But I'm sorry, that's what the office is called, and that's where you get your accommodations for college and the university. <laughs> so if you own your home, you're going to have to do your own accommodations, uh, but you can go on the internet, you can go on Amazon, and you know, it might be a little overwhelming, but there is a ton of tools that you can use for smoke and, and, and fire alarms that flash. Uh, that will connect to a vibrator, that will connect with your phone to alert you. So you have to look, you have to uh, scrape through all that information. Um, there's captioning on TV, which I already mentioned. There's sign language, but that takes about a good two years for you to learn it well. And then who are you going to use it with? So if you don't use it, you lose it. You know, oral interpreting, which is a little hard, that's reading lips, which we know people only understand about 10% or less of lips because people have different accents, different ways of moving their face, facial expressions, and it's just really difficult. Um, and accommodations at work when you are ready uh, to ask for those accommodations so you see that it's really needed uh, either for the phone or for your office so you know when somebody's coming in or not. So that's really important. Now you can call, there are organizations out there that can provide assistance and your state can provide assistance with special caption phones uh, and those are free for you. So you just have to prove that you have uh, hearing loss. 
So there are assistants, um, you know, in the safety area. Also, I want to go back to that one. You know, some of us have, uh, we have balance issues, and so we can fall, uh, especially in the dark. You know, the, the just the balance issue uh, can hit some of us, and uh, we end up with problems, especially in the dark. <laughs> Don't ask me why, it just does. <laughs> so I just freeze when the lights go out. You know, I have to have a flashlight of some kind close to me so uh, my body doesn't go uh, bottoms up. So. <laughs> okay, so that's what I wanted to say for those who are new to hearing loss, those who are avoiding uh, attending to your hearing loss needs. But to hear, you know, what could happen to you if you don't attend to it. So I really, really want to encourage you to uh, look at your situation, go to the doctor, talk to them, get a referral to an ideologist if you need a referral and, and get attended to this situation. Uh, look if you are in a position to get hearing aids, um, if it's gone that far, you know, and you need cochlear implants, then plan for it. You know, I've had cochlear implants for quite a few years and I do well. I'm doing videos. You can understand my speech. So <laughs> it can't be that bad, huh? So um, truly, uh, it, it's not a waste of time and it's going to help you all the way around, especially with relationships around you. All right. Any questions, uh, any concerns, anything that I might have missed, um, just let me know. Also, um, you know, if you can go to an ideologist directly, that would be great. You know, I just want the well-being and what is best for you. So, which I don't know what it is <laughs> because I don't know your hearing loss. But if you suspect you have hearing loss and you're struggling now, uh, start attending to it so people don't have to bug you <laughs> like they had to do with me. So take care of yourselves. I'm glad you came by and I'll see you very soon.